Hello, it is Throwback Thursday, October 17th, 2019. Steve Cypress here. And yesterday was not Throwback Thursday, so I did not uh, use as a subject the 50th anniversary. It was October 16th, 1969, that my dad took me out of school. It was the only day of school I missed until high school when I realized what the heck am I doing and started not attending class and going to work and doing a lot better things than sitting in classrooms but I I was Mr. Goody Two Shoes back then and I had perfect attendance but my dad said nope back then there were no night games in the World Series they were all day games so the game started at I don't know three o'clock maybe or something like that and uh, my dad was like uh, I was like dad I can just I can go for a half day still get credit for attending and he was like look it's the first time that I learned. He said, there are uh, something, I'm paraphrasing, of course, but he taught me that there are, of course, a lot more educational opportunities, learning opportunities outside of school than there are just sitting in a classroom. So he insisted I learn that lesson by not attending school that day and heading off to Shea Stadium to watch my beloved Mets attempt to wrap up their improbable, incredible, nearly impossible four to one, four games to one World Series victory over the vaunted, all-powerful, all-amazing, I say amazing, that's the term for the Mets, of course, but the just the powerhouse team of the day, the dreaded Baltimore Orioles that had the hitting, the pitching, the fielding, they you know, won 109 games in the regular season and swept through the playoffs and they were just overwhelming favorites to beat the Mets. They won the first game against the Mets, but then the Mets won the next four in a row, including that game five that my dad took me to. We sat way up in the upper deck uh, in Shea Stadium. The upper deck was known as the Mezzanine. Uh, very nice. Who would want to buy tickets, I guess? There's a marketing lesson right there. If you got like an upper deck, why not just call it the Mezzanine, which stands for something like, you know, in the middle. So you have like uh, boxes, and then like field and lower level and then like mezzanine and oh, there just happens to be no upper level. Starbucks did a very similar thing, by the way, sticking to the marketing and business strategy theme. They did the same thing with their, their coffees. I don't drink coffee and I can't stand uh, even the smell of walking into a Starbucks, but I've been in them. And I do know uh, back in the day when I was getting coffees for people, uh, I think their small was called a large. I think it's called a venti like the Italian word or some kind of foreign word for large, is their small. And so uh, there you go. You can use the naming of your products, your services, to give a certain feeling to people uh, that they're not getting the least. Uh, you know, in um, airlines do a similar thing when they have first class, then they have coach. They don't have low class. They don't have steerage. Like on the ships in the old days, they have coach. Sounds a lot better than saying low class. And venti sounds a lot better than saying small. And mezzanine sounds a lot closer to the field than upper deck. Uh, but anyway, there we were. And uh, when the Mets, amazingly, uh, my favorite player of all time in the New York Mets, Cleon Jones, brings a tear to my eye just thinking about it, folks. Uh, when he caught the fly ball off Davey Johnson. Dave Johnson, as he was known back then, second baseman for the Orioles, who later ironically became the manager of the New York Mets the only other time they won the World Series in 1986 and Dave Johnson flew out to left field and there was Cleon Jones near the warning track caught the ball that was it game over Mets win and the fans rushed the field and started just celebrating outrageously which uh, you just don't see anymore uh, or you see it less often uh, now they have like you know as soon as there's we're getting into the the last inning or anywhere near the last out the police start rimming the whole field sometimes on horseback or whatever they're like you know you can't do this because the the Mets fans went crazy stormed the field and started ripping up the turf and I pleaded with my dad he was like okay finally and after about 10 minutes of soaking it all in and just loving it and I, I think about my dad who had to love it a lot more born in Brooklyn so a Brooklyn Dodgers fan growing up and the Brooklyn Dodgers and the New York Giants both New York baseball teams until the 1950s when they ripped the hearts out of their New York fans by moving to the left coast and becoming the San Francisco Giants and the Los Angeles Dodgers. And there went my dad's favorite team, just boom, 3,000 miles away. 
And so New York was left without National League Baseball until years later when the New York Mets came to town. And a little trivia for you, if you don't know, the Mets colors, blue and orange, of course, come from the colors of the Brooklyn Dodgers blue and the New York Giants orange. That's why the Mets colors are blue and orange. In fact, I can ask, I'm joined today by the esteemed Mr. Mets old-time bobblehead doll in honor of the 1969 championship. And uh, the best man at my wedding, Scott Regenbogen, who sent me the Tom Seaver vintage baseball card and figurine he put together on this wooden stand. Uh, Tom Seaver, star of the Mets, uh, all-time star of the Mets, and, of course, big star of that 1969 team anyway. So um, where was I? I forget. Oh, yeah, we finally, uh, my dad let me go down and storm on the field, and I remember ripping up a piece of sod somewhere uh, in in right field, like because we had gone on near the dugout out there, and uh, we were somewhere out there early in the outfield. Who knows? You know, the whole thing was crazy, and I can't remember it that clearly. I couldn't even remember it clearly a week later. It was just pandemonium. But I do remember lip <laughs> a little piece of grass. Then we're going home on the on the Long Island Railroad, uh, just a few stops to where we lived, and uh, and I'm taking this grass, and then I planted it. I, I was like keeping it, and and my mom uh, was like, "Well, you can't, you don't just keep that; it's gonna die and turn brown and turn to nothingness in like two days. You gotta like plant that." And I was like, "Oh, but it's such a memento." Well, I planted it on the side of the house, and and that was my little shrine to the New York Mets. Unfortunately, I uh, I didn't or I wasn't allowed to kind of go overboard and like put you know like a whole you know fence around it and whatever and it, it it pretty soon got mixed in of course with just the rest of the of the grass but uh for the time being there was my little memorial to Shea State of the New York Mets some torn up grass from the field but man that was exciting that was 50 years ago yesterday another business lesson is uh, what kind of business do you have where you can build that kind of a brand loyalty that somehow you could have people loyal to you 50 years later still reminiscing about a positive experience with your business because even though you know we we see it as a sport and a team and american pastime and all that kind of stuff each baseball team is really simply a business and they just do a fantastic job of getting people i mean i must besides this stuff i mean i own hundreds of dollars of mets merchandise and mementos and Unfortunately, I remember way back when I was cleaning stuff out and I sold my Game 5 program to the 1969 World Series. I sold my ticket stub from the game. And uh, now it's common. The, the Mets players, they, uh, you know, they've been doing a couple of gatherings for their 50th anniversary, including one in June in City Field where the Mets play now. And uh, all the players, usually they say the same thing. They say, you know, over the years I've had like well over 100,000 people come up to me and tell me they were at that game. Uh, and the place only holds 53,000, I hold 53,000 or something. And I'm like, hmm. So I wonder if people are thinking that I'm one of those people just making it up that I was there. Boy, I should have kept that ticket stuff. Uh, all I do have, I bet I could look it up since I sold it on eBay. I do have my photo of it. Uh, I don't know, 10 years ago or longer, 15 years ago, whenever I sold it, that I did have it. And I sold it. So at least there's a record on eBay of me selling a ticket stub to Game 5, the decisive Game 5, 50 years ago yesterday to the 1969 World Series Championship of the Mets and the program that went along with it. Uh, of course, I could have gotten that from anywhere, I guess. So uh, 